Uh, well, welcome and thank you for coming here this afternoon. Uh, the Dayton region is unique in many ways, including the way this community handles project requests for federal funds. The system currently managed by the Dayton Development Coalition creates a prioritized list of projects in several categories that is presented to federal legislatures. Uh, this system creates a focused investment strategy for the region by using an objective process for prioritizing community projects. The review process is a model, both nationally uh, and, uh, and statewide. It ensures that as a community, we do not end up with a bridge to nowhere. Uh, as with any process, though, it is important to undertake a review to determine if the process can be improved. During the annual fly-in in April last year, I announced that a review was necessary to increase accountability to the community. As I stated in April, the review process will focus on several areas. One, increasing transparency and community participation in the project selection process. Two, increasing accountability of the funding recipient. And three, instituting mechanisms for advocacy and validation of project requests. With the support of the Dayton Development Coalition, I have created a Priority Development Review Committee to examine the current process for possible improvement. Committee members were selected due to their long-standing service to the community, their familiarity uh, with uh, this, pro this process, but not direct involvement with the current prioritization process and their recognized contributions to the advancement of the Dayton region. The review committee is composed of the following uh, individuals. Uh, Marnie Flagel, chair, of course, here, here to my right. William Gillespie, vice chair, also to my right. And we also have um, Mayor of Oakwood, Judy Cook. Uh, Mr. Larry Janning, who has been uh, active with wright Patterson Air Force Base. Um, Ms. Mary Sue Kessler, of course, who's been very active in community and neighborhood development. Uh, Bill Schneider, uh, who's been in, active both as a community leader with the Day Development Coalition and a business leader, but also has community development expertise through his work with Citywide. And uh, Mr. Don Vermillion, of course, uh, his um, tenure at uh, the county uh, gave us many innovations, including the EDGE grant process. Uh, Mr. Robert Sweeney, uh, who's here in, in the middle to my left, is Secretary of the Board of Trustees at Wright State University. He will be providing guidance and working directly with the committee uh, during this final report. The committee is operating on an aggressive time frame uh, to produce a report by recommendations uh, that we expect by the middle of November. The report will ensure that the prioritization process is well communicated, transparent, and is understood by the community. I'd like to thank Jim Leftwich and Mark Thompson, uh, Chair of the Party Development Advocacy Committee, and John Landis, Chair of the Coalition Board of Trustees, for their support and assistance with this review. Uh, now, what's important about this? Um, the federal funding that we receive through this process uh, is really essential as we look to our transportation needs, our strategic focus for wright Patterson Air Force Base, and for economic development. Ensuring that that process is open and is a model nationally is very important. Uh, congressionally directed funding has come under significant amount of scrutiny. Uh, there's a number of calls for reform. I personally believe that what we do here in this region is a model for national reform for this process. Uh, we want to ensure as we look to promoting the Dayton region's process as a national model, that what we're doing is the best that we can, ensuring that we get the best projects, uh, that we maximize the utilization of the federal funding that we receive, accountability to the community, and transparency to the community. I am very appreciative of those who have volunteered their time to be part of this review committee. Uh, they are known as community leaders. They bring with them uh, a tremendous understanding of accountability, transparency, management, and getting the job done. Uh, I'm very grateful to William Gillespie as vice chair and Marnie Flegel as chair uh, who've, uh, who bring their expertise and really their, their credibility and reputation to this process. And I'm also thankful to the Day Development Coalition for the work that they're going to be doing uh, to help us ensure that we get the best information uh, to get the best recommendations from this committee. Uh, with that, I'd like to recognize uh, Jim Lethwich, President of the Development Coalition. Thank you. Thank you, Congressman Turner. Um, good afternoon. I'd really like to thank you all for being here. Uh, I want to thank Congressman Turner for, uh, for initiating this and, uh, and also take a moment and thank our, our Party Development Advocacy Committee Chair, uh, Mark Thompson, and uh, especially thank uh, Ms. Flagel and Mr. Gillespie uh, for taking time, as well as all the other members of the panel, to, to do this. I know it's a, it's a uh, tremendous contribution that you're making to this region, and uh, we'll, uh, we'll greatly appreciate the, the results that, uh, that you deliver. Um, this process that we have has served us extremely well. Um, it's a process that engages cities and townships, uh, businesses, agencies, and elected officials. Uh, and to make sure that the priorities that we have are, are correctly and, and clearly communicated to our elected officials in Washington. And we have every right to be proud of the effectiveness and the results that we've achieved. Um, but the citizens of this region should expect more 
And, uh, and as a result of this review, that's what we're going to give them. Uh, we're going to continue to find ways to improve this process. Uh, we in the coalition are going to be fully supportive of the committee that uh, Congressman Turner has pulled together, uh, being led by these two folks here to my right. And, uh, and, and that's why uh, this panel is being convened, is to find ways uh, that we can benefit from that and that this entire region can benefit uh, from an improved process and over the long term, uh, hopefully we achieve even better results than we have. Uh, I want to thank you for your service um, on this process as well as the rest of the members of the panel. Uh, we look forward to receiving your recommendations. Uh, and I want to thank Congressman Turner for his leadership, uh, his effectiveness in, in, in leading this process and the effectiveness in, in what he's done for this region uh, during his time in Congress and in, in bringing back uh, uh, great results as a function of, of uh, the role he plays in this process and, and what you've delivered. Uh, so thank you very much for that. And uh, we look forward to the results. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, to give you just a, a little bit of a quantification of the, um, of the congressionally directed funding to the community. Since I have been in Congress over the past six and a half years, uh, the, the funding that has gone to Wright-Patterson Air Force Base and the surrounding community through congressionally directed funding totals over $400 million. So if you think of just a, a, a minor leveraging ratio, uh, we're talking about a number that for economic development impact is, is clearly over a billion dollars for this region. Um, that's what's at stake when you look at the importance of these funds. Uh, investing them right, make certain that we get the, the right return on investment and that they're placed appropriately uh, is what the coalition's been about, and we're looking forward to how we can, can improve that. Um, and Marty Flagel comes with uh, an incredible list of accomplishments in our community, in, including, of course, her leadership of County Court. Um, because of, of uh, her leadership in the community, she's well aware of the overlap of state, uh, national and federal funding, uh, local funding, uh, how they work together. Uh, she's also familiar with the um, different groups uh, that have to be pulled together in order to pull that uh, strategic plan through the, um, the coalition's process. And uh, because of her leadership, I'm really appreciative of her doing this, and it's my honor to introduce my book. My remarks will be very brief. I can just say that I was extremely pleased to be asked to do this. Number one, because we have been successful through Congressman Turner and getting such large amounts of money. And uh, the management by the Dayton Development Coalition has been excellent. Uh, but again, you, we, we need to review processes every so often. And uh, Congressman Turner assured me that we would have a broad cross-section of community leaders on the committee, which we do have. And uh, we believe that uh, this uh, model process uh, can be achieved and improved if necessary and keep on bringing the money back to a region that we know uh, not only needs it but knows how to use it judiciously. Thank you. Thank you. Questions? In the absence of a process like that, what are you, like this, what are you really left with? Right. This. Well, that's a very good point. Um, the, in, in many communities, there is not a community planning uh, priority process. And what that means is, is that um, the, um, you have competition among the community in working with the congressional office uh, to, to, to get that funding. There's no overarching plan, uh, so the funds aren't invested uh, to the, the best way that they can. But secondly, the manner in which projects are selected is haphazard at best. Uh, in most communities, a, 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 um, one, the um, one organization that's applying for funding won't even know that another organization has applied for the same type of funding. Um, and because the end result of that, obviously, is, is that you, you don't get um, the best projects up front. The community doesn't get to decide where the money wants to, gets to go. Um, but you also don't get an enhancement of those applications because all of these projects have to go and compete nationally. It's not as if uh, when this process is done, um, that then federal funding just flows. Uh, when they give the priorities to me, uh, we have to then on a national level pitch them in competition of um, other national projects. So what this allows is, is these projects to be enhanced so they're more competitive on the federal level so I can be more successful in getting funding for these projects. That's a step that, that most communities miss. Um, and uh, I think it also allows uh, for um, the, uh, the overall leadership of the community to stack funding. They can look at what their state uh, funding objectives are, their local funding objectives are, and look for federal funding for gap funding instead of um, just for, for sole source funding, as many communities do.
Point Jeff's comes short. Like no, I just I'd like to add that in addition to the opportunity to jointly seek funding that is beneficial to the entire region, this also provides an opportunity and an avenue for individual organizations and jurisdictions in the region to have a communication forum where they can talk about not only those uh, grants or those programs that they're seeking, but also it offers a comfortable forum for these individuals to be able to communicate with each other about things that may not have been on the fly-in or the uh, Dayton Development Coalition's agenda. So it offers some side benefits beyond and above the great work that it does. Other questions? Is there a model for this that you based this on? Go and get from another the review committee yeah. um, basically for the review committee I went to look for for people who um, had because of their past leadership in the community uh, had backgrounds and expertise uh, that would be necessary to do this uh, but also had remained very active in the community and are so recognizable leaders um, to be able to um, to both reach out to the community to listen because the community is going to help these, each of these individuals uh, to hear what some of the problems are with the system and how it can be improved, uh, but also to synthesize that and come up with recommendations that the community can be behind. Um, the, um, certainly they will look at other models like the EDGE grant process um, for things that we need to be doing here that perhaps we're not uh, that, um, that need to be incorporated. Six weeks. Well, actually, they started already, and it is, and and you know, we we don't have them on a hard stop date, but we've we've tried to give them, um, you know, the volunteer uh, cut off of, you know, we'd like it wrapped up by the end of the year, but they did get started already. Our, it's uh, six weeks from our announcement. Okay. Their their goal, the assignment to them is what? Find out what the community thinks, our ways that this process can be improved. Look to other best practices. Um, do a deep dive into how does the process really work, what do we know, what are some of the things that even people who are involved in it find frustrating or that need to be improved. Um, look to uh, successful issues of strategic planning and then make recommendations as to how this can be enhanced. One aspect that I can tell you on the accountability, which is number two on the list, currently the process does not include those that apply for funding coming back and reporting how they use the funds and what monies that they got. Um, so that's going to be a relatively easy one because it's something that's currently missing in the system um, that uh, a number of people have said it, it would be helpful, including myself. Um, and uh, you know, so they're going to be coming up with recommendations as to how to implement that accountability loop so that not only do people come through the process and get, um, the, uh, get ranked for funding, but they also have to come back in the process and let us know what did they do with the money, how did it go, did the leverage ratios that they predicted uh, pan out, did the economic impact of the project achieve what we had all wanted it to? Any other questions? Mark, do you want to add anything? Mark Scrooge, the chair of the PDEC process. <clears throat> yeah, just briefly, I, I think uh, Mike pointed out earlier, this is fundamentally about responsible government. and. Uh, it's a great process. We think we can improve it, like all processes. Now's a good time to uh, to touch this and, and take an objective look. And I appreciate Marnie and Bill stepping up to, to lead that process. And uh, we're, we're confident that we'll take a good process and make it better. And then uh, Robert Sweeney from um, Red State University is uh, is helping um, in the in the synthesis of all the information that they're receiving uh, with his work with Wright State University's uh, board and their strategic planning process. We're really um, looking forward to the value of your Would you like to make a comment? If you have anything you'd like to say. If not, it's okay. All right. <laughs> if there are no other questions, then uh, uh, we thank you all for being here.